Welcome to Spirit Alive. I'm Roma Fisher. Thank you for tuning again to our program. I believe there's a, a wonderful message for you today, and God will answer your situation with his word. I thank you, my partners and friends across Canada, for your prayers and for your support. And uh, right after the program, we're going to pray with you and for you in the name of Jesus. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And I know I understand there's people, there's a lot of complaining going on with the COVID, with the masks. It's God's will that we're, that we're, that we get happy no matter what happens in our lives. God doesn't want you to be in the dark concerning his will. And, and there's people walking around needlessly, not knowing what the will of God is for their lives. Hello, viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. And so kids are getting bombarded with stuff like this, and they're looking at these uh, stars that they're, they're, uh, that's what they should be like. They disrespect authority and whatever. That's coming through real clear. We can see it, but the kids can't say, this is cool, man. Let's follow them right into hell. But see that it says here, notice 2 Timothy 2, 25 and 26. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. This is the pastor's job right here. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap for they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. The scripture says that the devil can trap you to do his will. Well, how does he trap you? Well, he does, he does a lot of things to trap you. One of the ways he does it is through fear. Your peers, you're afraid of your peers to make decisions and different things. I mean, he can force you to do different things because of, because of this. People have killed other people because of peer pressure. Peer pressure. Jesus said to Peter, because Peter was influenced by Satan, here in Mark chapter 8, verse 33, New Living. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples, then he reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan. He said, you are seeing the things merely from a human point of view, not from God's point of view. So you can see here, I mean, Jesus, it's Jesus talking to his disciples. And Peter is getting influenced and saying things out of the will of God, saying things that the devil, you know, how many people understand that some, sometimes you're being influenced by the devil the way you speak? He was a, no, not me. No, everybody's gone through. Peter was a man of God. I mean, he, he's following God. He's doing his part. So, uh, Peter said he feared Satan can influence uh, a certain people over here. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, he says, But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ, he's talking to the Corinthians, will be corrupted just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. So when it comes to God's will, you know, Satan can come how, some, somehow come into a person's life and then they can make decisions out of the will of God, out of God's plan, right into, into the devil's lap. Satan has power to influence people or even a lot of people of the world. Here's what the Apostle John said. Apostle John said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, we know that we are children of God. And that the world around us is under the control or the influence of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come. He has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. And now we can live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ. 
the only true God, and he is eternal, is eternal life. So he says the whole world under us is un under the influence of the, of the evil one, the devil. The whole world. But they say, well, is that true? Yeah, well, the Bible says that right here, so you can take from it what you need to take from it. So we need to know what God's will is. We need to know when we're being evil affected. We should know when the devil is coming to make, help us, uh, you know, get out of the will of God. We need to know the will for, a lot, for our own personal lives, that there is a perfect will for our lives, that God's perfect will for my life is not yours. Yours is not mine, mine is not yours. Everybody has, has specific things that God wants them to do. But there's general things that God wants all of us to do. God wants all of us to be saved. He wants all of us to be filled with the Spirit. He wants all of us to be led by the Spirit. He wants all of us to go to church and have good influence in our lives. God wants all that. <clears throat> and if you don't go associate with good people, it's hard to find the will of God out there by yourself because there's so much influence out there. So, Jeremiah 29, 11, the prophet Jeremiah said it's a good plan that God has. His will is a good plan. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. Not just one plan, but plans. There's many things that God wants you to do. Find one of them at least. <laughs> Start with that. <clears throat> Amen. He said, there are plans for good. Everybody say plans for good. So God never planned one bad thing for you. According to this verse of scripture, he didn't plan anything bad to happen to you. He says, not for disaster. If there's anything going on financially, disaster in your family, relationship disaster, that's not God's plan. He says to give you a future and a hope. So there is a future for us, something good for us, for our lives. Every one of us in here right now can claim a good future. We can claim something good is going to happen. It's, it's, it's perfectly uh, in the will of God for you to say something good is going to happen to me. Get up every morning and say something good is going to happen to me. And if somebody's beside you, say, you know, something's going to happen to you because you're with me. <laughs> Amen? Because it, it, it just flows to other people. But if you're with bad people, bad is going to happen to you. I was reading different scriptures there. The people who, who, who hang around with the evil people that are out of the will of God, bad is going to happen to you. Because you happen to be standing in the same spot. If you get arrested... Or if somebody gets arrested and they've done bad things and you're there with them, you're going to be arrested too. Right? It says, so nothing bad in God's plan ever happens. Either you believe it or not believe it. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, you go ahead and believe what you want to believe. Nothing better, but not bad happens according to these different scriptures here we can look at. Uh, he did not plan for anyone to be sick. He didn't want anybody to die young. You ever notice, in, you ever notice I'm, I'm reading this because I read a lot of different things, that God has a plan. Psalm 91, 16 says, God wants us to all have long life. How long is long life? Well, Psalm 7, uh, 90, verse 10, I think it says that God wants everybody to live at least, at least, the least is 70 and 80 years. But if you want to live longer, you can't live longer. So that's why you're living longer. <laughs> she wants to live long. She, she can't go. She's got to pray for this ministry. So, so God wants everybody to live long, according to a lot of scriptures. Ephesians chapter uh, uh, 6, verse 1 to 3, it says there, Children, obey your parents and Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, for this is, the, this is a command that has a promise attached to it, that all will go well with you. When you honor your parents, when you respect your parents, respect your elders, all will go well with you. That means you'll be successful and that you will live long on the earth. So that's in the New Testament, that God wants us to live long. 
So every one of you can claim long life to say, thank God, he wants me to live long life. I was reading in the uh, First Chronicles 29, the Bible says David died at a good old age, good old age, full of riches and honor. Psalm 92 says that in old age, I'll be fat and flourishing. Well, uh, uh, fat means, uh, you know, it means you'll be uh, abundantly blessed. How many want to be fat and flourishing? Yeah. Amen. So fat is of the Lord, the scripture says. So there's nothing wrong with it. Right? She doesn't mind. I like Charlotte because she laughs at all my jokes all those many years she's been around. I go around Charlotte and I go to talk to her. She just laughs at me. Funny. So God wants you to live long. He didn't want anybody to. It says in Proverbs that a man can, can extend his life or a man can shorten his life. It's not all up to God. It's our decisions that we make affects our, us and affects other people. The Bible says if you're lazy, what's going to happen? You're not going to have any money. You're not going to have anything at the end of your life. If you just sit at all... Sit at home. What are you doing today? Oh, not too much. Are you going to have a good life? Oh, yeah. Well, the government will take care of me. 500 bucks a month. Well, inflation's happening. Well, we have to figure out some things, right? I'm just going to believe God and sit here. He's going to give me a new car. Well, he could. But most likely he won't. Because <laughs> he said you got to go to work. <laughs> There's nobody laughing at this one because it's true. <laughs> He's only, somebody's not going to drive over. You know, the Chev dealer guy is not going to come over. And sh- I just parked the car in your driveway. The Lord said to give it to you. <laughs> the bank manager in Nova Scotia dropped by. He said, here's the bag of money. The Lord spoke to me. There's 10 grand in there. I'm going to drop by every month for the next uh, four weeks. Well, that could happen, but it most likely it won't happen. Right? It's God's will to prosper us. Ephesians 2 and 10. Look at the Amplified Bible. God wants good things to happen to us. For we are his workmanship. In other words, God's working on you right now. You're not a finished project. Right? Everybody say, I'm not a finished project. Say, I'm, so I'm under construction. So that's a hard thing to remember, especially when you're mad at somebody. When they haven't paid you the 500 they said they was going to give back to you. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a work of art. So you are a work of art. I've had people say that in a bad way, but this is, this is a good way. <laughs> Created in Christ Jesus, born in you from above, or born from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works. So you're ready to do good things. Which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. So this scripture is very more specific than what, you know, uh, you know it says over there in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, here God has planned these things, good plans for you. Hi, everyone. It's Roma Fisher. Thank you for tuning in to Spirit Lab Television. To all my partners across the nation, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your support, your prayer, your financial contribution to what we're doing. I believe the Word of God is going to make a change in people's lives today. I'm glad wherever you are watching, I believe the Word of God is going to go out there and touch your life and change you because the Word of God is alive. And so listen to the program. Take some notes. Tell your friends. Listen, Spirit of Life is on. Pastor Roman is on with the Word of God again. I believe the Word is going to change your life. We're going to come right after the program and pray with you. Stay tuned. Hello, viewers and partners. 
Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Pastor Roma and Anita Fisher are celebrating 30 years of pastoral ministry in Thunder Bay. Thank you, partners and friends, for sending in your video greetings and messages of congratulations from across North America. Let's listen to those words of encouragement from our friends and partners. Hey, Roma and Anita, we understand that you guys are celebrating 30 years in the ministry. That's an awesome run, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Praise <years>. the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to congratulate you on that. And we believe as the Lord tears his coming that you will have many, many more years of fruitful ministry there in Ontario, Canada. And we know that the best is yet to come. Congratulations. It says here God has planned these things, good plans for you. So you, we, we need to put our faith in that. So you have to study how do we find the, the will of God? We have to study the Word, get to know God ourselves through the study of His Word on a regular basis, not just haphazardly. Have a strategic plan about what areas you want to study about. We need to study and learn the basic principles and determine His plan accordingly. The Apostle Paul tells, us, tell, tells Timothy, study to show yourself approved to God, unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, or the word is disappointed, rightly dividing the truth. But, shame, but shun profane and vain babblings. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15. They will increase unto more ungodliness, for the word will eat as it does a canker or cancer, of whom Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is already, has passed already and overthrew the faith of some. God doesn't want you to affect other people's faith adversely, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Jesus Christ depart from iniquity. He didn't want us to live in sin. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and earth, and some to honor, honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, or cleanse himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified meat for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. When he talks about wood, earth, and stubble, when he talks about that in the scripture, when he talks about work, those are, those are not the will of God for your life. Because you could be doing works that are, look so good in the natural, but it won't amount to anything as far as God's plan is concerned. How many people know your, whatever you do here will follow you into the next world? He, he'll reward you accordingly. Not everything that comes here is going to be reward, rewarded, but there's some things in heaven. Some people are on God's plan because they have become more diligent to study the Word of God, like these people in Acts 17 and 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica that they received the Word of God with readiness of mind. And they searched the Scriptures daily. Those things would... Uh, those things were so, if, if, you know, when I'm preaching something, you should study the Bible then and say, okay, is this in the Bible? Did pastor, what he said, is that true? Then look at it for yourself and read it. Study other scriptures. So there's two primary ways to know the will of God. First is go to the word of God, which is his plan. I'm reading a New Living Translation. So, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that He has done for you. 
when you offer your body, you give your body to God, that means you're not going to use your body anymore to sin. Because people say, I can't do that. You know, for various reasons. Because people, your body, of course, is not born again. It's going to want to do what it wants to do. Let them be a living, holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior of the customers of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. See? If you can change the way you think, you can get into the will of God. Not changing like the world. It talks about here the world, the customs of the world, but change the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. So the way to find the will of God is to study the will of God, study the word of God. He's going to change the way you think so that you can make decisions based on the thinking that you have. Look at it. Ask yourself, is my thinking, is that the plan of God? Is that the way God wants me to think? Or is that the way, uh, is that my own thinking? Secondly, you need to become familiar with the Holy Spirit in your prayer life. So pray. Pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your helper in prayer. He can assist you to know God's perfect plan for you. Notice over here Romans 8, 26, 27, and 28. New Living Translation, I'm reading. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For, for example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. A lot of times people think they know what God wants them to do, so they're praying out of the will of God. Ask yourself, when you're praying, when you're praying for something, is that the will of God? Look at your prayer and find that in the scripture where it says that, what you just said. Well, he needs a wife. I'm going to pray that he gets a wife. Well, maybe God doesn't want him to get married. Well, he needs a job to end this over here. Uh, I'm going to pray that he goes over here. No, it's not, you, you don't know God's will. Well, you need to go to the ministry. I'm going to pray you go to the ministry. How do you know God wants him to go to the ministry? Are you Holy Spirit? We didn't know you were Holy Spirit. My goodness. No. He says here, but the Holy Spirit prays for us. How does he do it? With groanings. The word groanings has reference to praying in tongues. The word groanings means inarticulate speech. In 1 Corinthians 14, 14, he said the Holy Spirit, if you look at the uh, 14, 14, I believe is 1 Corinthians, that the, it says in the Amplified, the Holy Spirit takes our spirit when we pray in tongues and prays the will of God through us as you yield to him and pray the pray perfect will of God. So a lot of times, you know, you do this. So Father... I want to pray the will of God for my life. I don't know what, what the, what's happening over here. My mind tells me other things. People are saying this. This circumstance says this. My history says this. My experience says this. But I'm going to look to you. And I'm going to pray the will of God. And you go, Father, I'm praying the will of God for my life. The devil says, what are you doing? So I'm praying the will of God. As the Bible says so. But you have to believe that. You have to know the scripture what it says here before you actually can do that. A lot of times, that's the way I pray. 90% of the time, 90% of the time, that's the way I pray for myself. That's the way I pray for my kids because I don't know what, what God wants exactly for them. I say, Lord, I'm praying for Natasha right now in the name of Jesus. I know she's making some decisions. Father, I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus right now. You said if I pray in tongues, Holy Spirit, you said you'd help me to pray over this area here. I'm praying in tongues. When it, when, it came, when it comes to addictions, I found all the scriptures in the Bible that answer my questions about addictions. And I stand on the scriptures. I make, I, I make reference to it and I speak, speak over my children. And I pray that they would come out of this darkness. I pray, I, I talk to the devil. And I will find scriptures that, I, that show me that I can talk to the devil. And show me that I can come to the devil and tell him about that. And I talk to the devil. Devil, listen. Come on here, I want to talk to you. You can't have my child. I'm speaking to you right now. I'm, I'm binding you. I'm taking authority over you right now. You cannot have her. 
I'm breaking power over her. I'm breaking power over her mind in the name of Jesus. And I command that you loose her to me right now. Because the Bible says, here's what it says. I read the scripture to him. And I say, you release her to me right now. And I loose the angels of God. Thank you for watching Spirit Alive. I believe this has uh, been a real life changer for you, for the word to come in your life today. So I'm going to come in agreement with you according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. The Bible said, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done to my Father which is in heaven. According to your word, Lord God, you said in your word, Matthew 8, 17, that himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And we believe that healing belongs to every one of our friends, our partners and friends. We thank you according to your word in the 23rd Psalm that Jesus is our shepherd and you will provide every need. You also will provide protection as our shepherd. You'll provide resources. You'll provide direction as our shepherd. And so we thank you for those needs being met. And we thank you, Lord God, you said in your word, Colossians 1, 13, that you provide deliverance for us from all the power of the enemy. Be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet from every sickness, every virus, every germ in the name of Jesus. Be healed from every kind of sickness. I thank you, Father, for resources, for direction, for protection for every one of my friends in the name of Jesus. Thank you as I come in agreement with them that the situation in their family is going to change. The children's situation, the daughter and the son, and all those situations that are in upheaval right now and the devil is trying to say there's no way it's going to be changed but all things are possible i want to thank you for intervening in that situation right now in the mighty name of jesus i thank you for the anointing to break every yoke in jesus name those of you that need jesus christ into your life you've never made jesus the lord of your life the bible says whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved the Bible says, if thou believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. And so right now, pray this prayer with me. Say, dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he came here and died for me, and he went and paid the penalty. He went down into the lower regions and was raised the third day. I believe he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, and right now he's interceding for me pray for me and he is my lord and my savior thank you according to your word i'm now born again i'm now saved in jesus name amen if you prayed that prayer you are now born again we want to help you and give you material to help you in your life in your new life in jesus thank you we'll see you again next week at the same time same place bye-bye